Hello everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome you to the SPIA Optical Systems Design Conference. Secondly, I'd like to thank you for coming to my presentation that titles Conformal Optical Coatings on Complex 3D Macrostructures Using Atomic Layer Deposition. So before we jump into the topic, let me briefly introduce myself. So my name is Dr. Chondran. I received my PhD in 2019 from Aalto University School of Electrical Engineering in Finland. During my time in academia, I've studied the application of ALD for both optics and photonics. Over the recent years, I've had the pleasure to publish some of my work in very highly cited journals, such as Nature Communications and ACS Photonics. Currently, I'm a process development engineer at Benek. Benek is the world's leading ALD dedicated company uh, with our headquarters here in Finland. Uh, as of now, we have more than 30 years of industrial expertise in using ALD solutions for applications ranging from thin film electroluminescent displays to optical coatings. Uh, right now, we have more than 170 personnel and we are very rapidly growing today. So, let's start this presentation with motivation. Why are we doing this kind of research? So, as we know, optics and optical sciences are in fact one of the oldest branches of physical sciences. Uh, however, optics is still a very relevant technology today, as it is being very widely used uh, in all kinds of devices found in everyday life. These can be, for example, mobile phones, solar cells, or self-driving cars. The reason why optics has gone this far is because the production of optical components is actually a very well-established technology. For example, the state-of-the-art uh, fabrication technologies can be of low cost, low temperature, and also can offer high throughput and also excellent uniformity. However, there is still a one very important feature that is missing from this list, and it is the conformality of the deposition. Conformality is becoming a very important feature as the uh, optical systems today are getting more and more complex. Uh, this is not happening only at the micro scale, with examples being micro nanostructures, gratings or sidewalls, but also on the macrostructures with uh, examples being freeform optics, high curvature lenses or optical domes, tubes and rods. So if we take a look uh, of the tra traditional fabrication methods used to produce optical elements, the most widely used one is the PVD processes or physical vapor deposition processes. Although PVD processes can offer all the features he listed here as green, uh, these kind of features can only be achieved at the very top structure and typically on a planar uh, surface only. This problem can somewhat be uh, alleviated by switching to a semi-surface controlled gas phase process, uh, such as CVD, for example. Although with CVD, film deposition can also be obtained at the sidewalls and also at the uh, back structure, uh, the film still grows uh, very um, much thicker on the top side of the, of the substrate, and thus the conformality is not really there. On the other hand, atomic layer deposition, or ALD, can offer perfectly conformal film deposition on even the most challenging surfaces uh, with highest aspect ratios. The reason for this is because uh, the uh, layer by layer growth uh, nature of ALD is actually surface controlled rather than a source-controlled gas phase process. So for this reason, ALD has gained a lot of popularity over the recent years, um, not only in optical sciences, but also on other areas of physical and chemical sciences as well. But what exactly is atomic layer deposition? Atomic layer deposition is a thin film deposition technique that is based on saturated surface reactions of the precursor and the surface pieces. Uh, unlike traditional fabrication methods such as uh, CVD or PVD, where the precursors are released onto the surface simultaneously, uh, in ALD the precursors are actually released onto the surface alternatively. 
So this kind of layer by layer growth mechanism not only enables high conformality, but also very uniform and accurate control of the film thickness. But how does the deposition actually work? So let's take a case example, the production of aluminum oxide from a TMA and water process on a hydrogel terminated surface. So we start our process by pulsing the first reactant onto the surface. The first reactant is typically a uh, metal organic precursor such as uh, trimethyl aluminum as shown here. So during the first reactant pulse, the TMA molecules chemisorb onto the surface and some byproducts are produced from these chemical reactions. In this case, methane. So once all these uh, surface sites have been filled, the film growth is actually terminated uh, because the TMA molecule cannot react with the surface anymore and the TMA cannot grow on itself. So in this way the growth stops and before we continue this process we want to get rid of all the byproducts uh, that have been generated and all of the excess precursor that is still on the deposition chamber uh, because they could not react with the surface. So this is done with a purge step with an inert gas such as nitrogen or argon for example. So now we continue our process by introducing the second reactant, uh, typically an oxidizer such as water in this case. The water again reacts with the surface uh, with the chemisorption process and again byproducts are generated. In this case again methane as shown here. So once all of this metal now methyl terminate surface has reacted with uh, uh, water molecules, um, the growth again terminates because the water molecules cannot react with the surface anymore and the water cannot grow in itself. So before we continue this process again, we want to get rid of the water molecules that are not reacting anymore and also of the byproducts that are still in the uh, deposition chamber. So now we introduce another purge step to get rid of the uh, unwanted precursor and byproducts. And now we are left with a monolayer of aluminum oxide on the surface and uh, we can continue then this process, cycle this process uh, for as many times as we wish to reach the desired film thickness. Uh, because one monolayer typically produces roughly one angstrom or one tenth of a nanometer of film, uh, this typically needs to be repeated many, many times, 100 to 1000 times, for example, to reach hundreds or, or tens of nanometers of film. Uh, most materials can be deposited now with this ALD technology in some form. These can be, for example, oxides, nitrides, sulfides, fluorides or other uh, basic elements, for example. However, it is worthwhile to note that only some of these are actually scalable to mass production. And this is very important when it comes to producing optical components in large scale. So let me now demonstrate how this ALD technology uh, can be applied to produce optical coatings on complex 3D macrostructures. So in this work we studied the film growth on hemispherical domes or so-called optical domes. For this purpose we have made this kind of special uh, sample holder uh, made of stainless steel. Uh, it re resembles a hemispherical structure and it can include uh, up to nine uh, samples, one inch wafers typically, uh, such as silicon or si silica for example. Uh, all of these uh, sample holders or these windows uh, can include sample face up and face down. So this means that we can study how the film grows on both the concave and convex side of the structure. So in this work we do uh, process development for a variety of low loss oxides such as aluminum oxide, titanium dioxide, tantalum oxide, hafnium oxide and silicon dioxide. The process development is realized with our uh, P400A BATS ALD tool as you can see here. The setup that we use uh, in this work uh, is shown here. So we have a chamber that uh, holds three of these hemispherical domes. Uh, at the bottom we have a, a dummy dome actually and at the middle and top we have these our special sample holders. And the, the reason why have, we have included this kind of uh, 
a dummy at the bottom of this chamber is because we want to mimic the precursor flow as closely as possible in both the upper and the middle uh, dome that we, we study. So we start our uh, process development from aluminum oxide uh, at 70 degrees. So aluminum oxide is a low index material. Uh, it is one of the most studied ALD materials because of its ideal chemistry in, in ALD technology. So uh, we start with uh, uh, this process by with 500 ALD cycles and we basically divide the results into four different sets. So we have uh, film growth on the upper dome at the convex side, uh, film growth on the upper dome at the concave side, and the same for the lower dome. So the upper dome is now actually the, the top one and the lower dome is the middle one. Uh, but in this case it's the lower one because we are not measuring anything from the dummy dome. So here you can see the experimental results. Uh, as summary, uh, the average is around 45 nanometers uh, plus minus one nanometers. In percents, it's uh, roughly 1.13 in the case of the upper dome and 1.66 in the case of the lower dome. If you calculate the BATS non-uniformity, which is uh, including both of these domes or the entire deposition chamber in this case, uh, it's around 1.66%. Then we uh, studied the next process, which is titanium dioxide at the same deposition temperature, 70 degrees. Uh, titanium dioxide is a very high refractive index material and um, by performing 1350 ALD cycles, here you can see the experimental results. So as summary, uh, the film grows on average 100 nanometers plus minus 1 to 1 1.5 nanometers. Uh, the non-uniformity in the case of the upper dome is around 1.5% and in the case of the lower dome it's around 1.16. The batch non-uniformity for this uh, process is around 2%. Next, we studied tantalum oxide at 150 degrees. Tantalum oxide is a, also a high refractive index material with very low loss and high purity. Although it doesn't have as high refractive index as titanium dioxide, uh, tantalum oxide actually grows as amorphous at higher temperatures rather than uh, titanium dioxide, which actually starts to crystallize at 120 degrees. So this tantalum oxide is a good substitute for titanium dioxide at higher temperatures. So in this case, we performed 600 ALD cycles, and here you can see the results. On average, we had around 50 nanometers of film, plus minus one nanometers. Uh, Non-uniformity in the case of the upper dome is around 1.26 and in the case of the lower dome, around 1.37. The BATS non-uniformity for this process was found to be around 2.1%. Uh, next, we developed a process for hafnium oxide at 250 degrees. Hafnium oxide is also a high refractive index material, although it doesn't have as high refractive index as titanium dioxide or uh, tantalum oxide, for example. Hafnium oxide has very high or good electrical properties, such as uh, high breakdown voltage, low leakage current, and, and good dielectric strength in general. So it can be used as a, a substitute high index materials uh, in applications where electrical properties are required as well. So in this example, we performed 1100 ALD cycles, and here you can see the results. On average, we had around 54 nanometers, uh, 54.6 nanometers uh, plus minus 1.1 to 1.2. Uh, the non-uniformity in the case of the upper, upper dome and lower dome was found to be around the same, 1.66 to 1.67%. Uh, the batch non-uniformity was calculated to be around 2%. Finally, we developed a process for silicon dioxide at 300 degrees. Uh, the reason why we chose this high temperature is because it's very difficult to find precursors for the silicon uh, to react at lower temperatures without using, for example, ozone or oxygen plasma. So in this case, we used our special ALD process with, that allowed basically to deposit only 75 ALD cycles to reach roughly 75 to 80 nanometers of, of high quality film. So in this case, the average was found to be around 78 nanometers plus minus uh, 
two or, or a little bit less nanometers. The upper dome non-uniformity was found to be 2.33 and the lower dome non-uniformity around 2.05. The batch non-uniformity was found to be around 2.35%. So here you can see the summary of all the development processes and here there's actually additional processes that I didn't go through but they are uh, mostly other temperatures for these five different materials. For example in the case of aluminum oxide we had uh, three additional higher temperature processes and two in the case of titanium dioxide and also one for the hafnium oxide. So for example here you can see that the aluminum oxide at a little bit higher temperature grows actually very uh, uniformly and conformally, as you can see here. So overall, we could deposit basically all of these materials with uh, roughly 2%, 2 percent, 2 to 2.5 percent non-uniformity, which is a, a very good result in this kind of very, uh, very uh, difficult co configuration, uh, as, as shown here. So. Having developed these processes, we can then use these low and high index materials for all kinds of optical functionalities, ranging from edge pass filters to band pass filters and so on. We can actually also combine some of the precursor chemistries to also realize very high absorbing coatings as well. And this is uh, what I'm gonna show a quick example of. So uh, we deposited 500 nanometers of this aluminum doped titanium carbide using our uh, titanium and aluminum precursors on, on fused silica substrates that are included in this dome configuration. So one inch si silica substrate substrates on both sides of the dome. We measured the transmission from these uh, uh, silica coated uh, wafers uh, and on the visible side you can see uh, measured with the silicon detector we actually basically have less than 0.1% uh, transmission and at the infrared as measured with the in gas detector there's basically hardly anything uh, passing through this kind of structure in any any basically samples included into these dome configurations. So in conclusion uh, ALD enables uh, very complex macrostructures to be coated conformally to basically achieve various optical and of course other functionalities in a single process run. This is very important because it saves time and cost because we don't need to twist, rotate or otherwise move the object between uh, deposition run uh, because the one single process is, is conformal as it can be. Uh, Benek B-series batch ALD tools are actually ideal for coating these kind of com complex geometries in a single batch. And this was also the case here. So if you have any questions regarding this presentation, feel free to ask in the paper Slack channel. You can also contact me directly via email. Uh, and for more information, you can check our website as shown here. Finally, I'd like to thank you everyone for your time.